What's up, world? <laughs> hey. Hey. What's going on? Does everyone want to introduce themselves? I'm I'm Nick. I play guitar and I sing in the band uh, video you're watching right now. <laughs> uh, I'm Jack. I play bass and Elder. Who yeah, you guys are logged in to watch answer some questions. Uh, I'm Mike. I play guitar and keyboards in the band Elder. I'm Georg and I try to play drums. <laughs> Very <laughs> modest as always. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys um i guess first and foremost thanks to everyone for submitting a question we got way more questions than we could ever possibly answer or could ever want to answer so <laughs> we pared them down as much as we could uh and compiled some and made a list that we're going to randomly select from using a random number generator here and hopefully we'll uh, hit on all of the major points of curiosity for everyone who submitted a question if not they'll just have to see us at a show and ask us in person and that's the best we can do all right sure. we're gonna kick it off here when will you release release but without the shitty <laughs> <fade out>? <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, that was the first one, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Do you use psychedelics to create music or are you as professional as you seem? Uh, we are straight edge. <laughs> we are a cool straight edge band. I've never used psychedelics to create anything meaningful. Um, certainly have played music on psychedelics, but... Um, I don't know about Mike. I feel like he's, he might have written some riffs on psychedelics. I certainly have never. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have any specific moments of, you know, coming to a, a riff through psychedelic like experiences, but I've definitely had intense uh, relations with music on, from psychedelics, which have further influenced my music uh, indirectly. But uh, no, most of the time I've taken like acid and jam with people. It's been just horrible. <laughs> Every like, good riff that's like I've ever written has been written sober, to be perfectly honest. Like 99% yeah. of all the good ideas I've ever had have been like drinking coffee at like 12 in the afternoon or something. Yeah. For sure. So we are as professional or, as we seem. I mean, I've definitely come up with a lot of musical ideas smoking weed, <laughs> which is a very psychedelic drug too, but not that's classified under a psychedelic <laughs> <laughs> I got a got a gear question. How do you get the guitar sound from the intro of Legend? That's a really quick one. Uh, that one was also recorded using my 61 reissue SG, and it was just a clean tone in a Sound City 120 amplifier using a uh, Earthquaker Devices Dispatch Master. That was the, it's like a little delay and reverb. So that's it. Just a clean guitar go. tone. Yeah. All right, boys, what is your favorite dish and why? Favorite dish in general? Well, recently I've been on a, I'm a, I've been on a huge pancake uh, fix. Uh, every weekend, I, we'll try it. Uh, me and my girlfriend will try a different sort of pancake. We've made a souffle pancake, and today we made some silver dollars. <laughs> every time we try to get a hold of Jackie's <laughs> fucking making pancakes. <laughs> hey, that is hey. true. I'm I'm six I hours. Uh, there's a six hour difference, and I'm usually making breakfast while these guys are just starting to get rip roaring, drinking, and eating their <laughs> supper. <laughs> no, I'm gonna go with something classic and uh, cliche. I'd probably say pizza. Highly versatile food. Even shitty pizza is good, and yeah. good pizza is amazing. And it can be cheap, or you know, not cheap if you want it. And you can make it yourself. It's great. I'm also gonna go with pancakes. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, going to say, yeah. I'm going to say everything with a lot of cheese everything with a lot of cheese you're more of like a, a, a <laughs> chicken and hummus kind of guy yeah, yeah. bread and hummus for big, sure. piece, big piece of bread with a, a gob of hummus on top yeah but that's <laughs> just because I'm lazy are you self-taught or have you taken lessons and how important is music theory I took some lessons when I was young with, with Nick actually and then yeah, Jack that, and I took guitar lessons together in, when was that, junior high school? 
Yeah, we or or like freshman year of high school, or maybe uh, yeah, or maybe it was junior high school actually. We had a guitar teacher who had recently relocated to our small town, and he was a born again Christian and mostly a jazz guitarist. But one day we asked him, like, "Can you teach us some metal?" And he was like, "Oh, like this," and he's just like, and "He fucking shredded <laughs> it." And uh, he taught us he taught us speed picking. That was like the main speed takeaway picking. I got from that. Um, yeah but i think we didn't that's kind of cool for too, too long. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, was, he also yeah. he also taught us how to write a song with lyrics and we had a song called tuning pegs if i recall correctly <laughs> <laughs> i had a pretty cool teacher from i think when i was 12 until 19 uh at the music school but apart from that nothing really much i mean after that there was just a lot of jazz stuff that i wanted to check out and that kept me busy until right now i think in high school i've had really weird teacher experiences i took two lessons with like this really like uh this amazing jewish jazz guitar player and then my third lesson i showed up to the music school and uh, just the owner of the school was like, I think he moved to Israel yesterday. He didn't, <laughs> he didn't tell me anything about it. And then, um, uh, yeah, suffice to it. say, you weren't his favorite pupil. Yeah. And, uh, you had to go back. <laughs> yeah. Get away from this fucking guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, I took, oh, I, wait, but what about music theory? That's like your realm, right? Because I don't think, well, I don't know anything about music theory. I think yeah, you but, do, but you don't know it. Yeah, I mean, you definitely know music theory, but just maybe not the literal, like, uh, academic. Academic, yeah, 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 for so, sure. Um, but I took lessons with my third teacher, like, shortly after the departing Israeli dude. And he was mostly, he was a jazz guitar teacher and yoga teacher, but he taught me some just, like, modal, a lot of modal theory. What, uh, what pedals or gear do you use for the Gemini guitar tone? It's just a, a cranked amplifier. That's it. It's like the main tone for most of our records. It's just a very loud British amplifier. On that record, it was uh, my, also my Sound City 120, which is kind of like a cranked high watt. So that's basically all it is. Are you willing to collaborate with other artists? We had Whoever. Fabio oh, yeah. on, on the record, on the new Omens record. We brought Fabio Cuomo, right? Is that his name? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it's play. been really fucking cool to actually bring some different people and different ideas into into recording sessions. At least we never tried it live, but why not? Yeah. Well, Doctor, we had Doctor Space. We did play with Doctor Space. Yeah, that was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Georg, what kind? What was the drum rig uh, used on recording Omens? Um. Basically, a uh, Gretsch Broadcaster, uh, 13, 16, 24, and Peisty, uh, I think, Big Beat symbols. Was it Big Beat? The black, the, the black Big Beats. Uh, yeah, the, the 2002, uh, the, the new 2002 series that's a bit thinner and darker sounding than the original. Yeah, that's basically it. What about that uh, snare? Oh, that snare is, of course, a 1960 Slingerland, uh, I think, artist model snare from New York that my dad brought home with him a couple of years ago. And it's been my main snare ever since. You just made the, the one drummer watching this very happy. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Eight, please. All right, uh, 13, what is Nick's shampoo? But we actually have Georg listed to answer this one, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, basically whatever is available and smells nice. And as a conditioner, it's mostly coconut something. Oh. Um, <laughs> that's how, a secret. Do you, how do you even yeah. know it's true that I just take whatever's cheap, but uh, my wife does buy some sort of coconut thing, and I'm always using that. So, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm gonna step in here and just answer <laughs> this too. 
I use because I have some bad dandruff. Just saying, you know. <laughs> I, hey, I got a I got an extra <laughs> bottle of your tea gel in my room. Yeah, so I'm a big fan of the Neutrogena <laughs> tea gel. Extra strength keeps my shit uh, non flaky, and uh, it smells like tar. So it's like my favorite thing in the world. I'm just gonna say, every time we're on tour, none of us bring like the proper toiletries none of us have shampoo and we're always hitting up jack he's the only one who's got this stuff but he's only got the tea gel very sti- <laughs> very stingy with the tea gel very stingy which guys. is under totally understand totally understandable. thank you, it thank is, you. Yeah. <laughs> all right here was a favorite question i felt recently that jack donovan has warming qualities that if he were a film character he would be john hammond from the original jurassic park the old dude with the spiffing cap he and Jack have a lot of charisma and swag in their respective roles. John Hammond, great dinosaur creator. Jack Donovan, great dirty bass riff creator. He's like the dinosaur creator of Epic Riffs. Uh, if the other band members were characters from films, who would they like themselves to be? Or who would they liken themselves to, maybe? For sure. Okay, and so I, I would I, ask who Jack sees himself as, too. I, I love this question. It's just great. But and I'm gonna keep it in the Jurassic Park realm for this because I slightly disagree with the question asker. I would say that Risberg is more the John Hammond character, you know, nerding out about DNA <laughs> and um, looking at his amber and just like being like real psyched on that. Um, well, I mean, the song "Embers" was after based after the guy's little like bug he had an ember. Yeah, there you go, yeah. amber, amber. Whoops. Um, and uh, <laughs> Georg would be uh, Ray Arnold, who's Samuel L. Jackson in the film um just chilling and holding on to his butt are you looking at notes right now yeah i made some notes <laughs> <laughs> nick nick our fearless leader is, <laughs> um dr alan what is it greer grave i forget uh He's and great. then i consider myself dennis who's wayne knight's character um and because he's really psyched about the barbasol the thing that hides the DNA. I think. Uh, I wait, I don't know any of these. I haven't seen Jurassic Park in a while. But the true heads will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I know. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's super cool. It has those little pods in it. Yeah. My yeah, friend yeah. had a, one of those. We bought a, a like a weed stash thing. It was an old uh, shaving gel thing that you could yeah. screw and keep weed. Classic. Yeah. <laughs> DNA or weed. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone else want to say who which film character they? would liken themselves to uh Qui-Gon Jinn from star wars has always been a role uh, that's a good call that's a good call yeah. i think yeah. he's the reason i have long hair <laughs> or, I, start, or I, I started growing my hair out. everyone just assumes it's because you're into like heavy metal or something no, no. It's just star wars episode one yeah <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, is there new gold and silver material happening? Sure. Yeah. There is. Actually, yeah. It's funny that uh, unfortunately Jack Jack was in gold and silver too. Now we've had a, a lineup switch out because three of us, except for or me, Georg, and Mike, are on the same co- continent now. So we restarted the band for a show, which was of course postponed. But we all we made a bunch of new material, and uh, now we don't Bummer. know what to do with it. So, what inspired you to start a band? I don't really know about Georg and Mike too much on this. We definitely had bands all through high school, a bunch of really shitty ones, um, and a bunch of really hilarious ones too, like a like a fantasy metal band. Uh, that wasn't with you. We had like a metalcore band. No, we did. We did. There was a a Riador. Oh yeah, we actually. I guess that means I had two fantasy metal bands. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you guys have a band called like, uh, uh, not like Bartok Tyko- uh, Tchaikovsky? Yeah, Tchaikovsky. that was our Tchaikovsky yeah. was our metalcore band, and uh, every Adore was our fantasy metal band, and then I had another one with a with a, it was just a two two person band with a drum machine, and that was called. Uh, and they were slain by the mighty fist of Captain Huron. <laughs> and I think there was some good material for that. We recorded oh, it's it. It's really good I, material. I don't know where it is anymore. So, I guess that's that. Oh, why did we start? Why did we start Elder? I don't know because we were just like 
schizophrenically starting bands at that point and playing all sorts of music. But I think we got into stoner metal and wanted to do a band that sounded like that. For sure. Yeah. Where's the snack crew? Yo, snack crew update. Haven't done one in a little bit, but I'll check in real quick uh, for my new favorite snack right now. And that is going to (laughs) be the... Extra toasty oh, cheeses. Oh, oh my that god! Is a great move. Excellent snack. Um, and are they the normal size ones? These are the normal size ones. But my favorite thing is this little line right here that says the number one requested cheese it flavor ever. So that means this was picked by the fans, and I, I think that they the fans got it right. The extra to back in the old cheese boxes. If you got the extra toasty one, you just felt lucky. So. Kudos to cheez So what's up with the snack crew, uh, for those who don't know? The snack crew was just like a little fun thing I used to do, and then it kind of fell off. But maybe I'll bring it back. I don't know. We'll see. 2020. <laughs> so much <laughs> sass. It's a sassy question. All right. Um, <laughs> what pickups do you use? I have in my Dunnable guitar um, Lawler Imperial humbuckers right now. And that's pretty much the only guitar I'm using. I have an ES-335 that I would like to use live too. And that's just got um, 57 classic pickups, the same as were in my SG. Well, I have (laughs) my Rickenbacker that has its original Rickenbacker pickups. And the bridge pickup is pretty screwed up right now. So need to get that fixed. Rewound. I I have some pickups I wound for my telly. They're just like early 60s style Fender Telecaster pickups. Um, oh yeah, we, um, a bunch of people who ask gear questions were, I guess I should have said this earlier. Um, we're not going to go into too much detail, even though I did say ask us uh, any gear related stuff because we filmed a rig rundown for you. We did it ourselves. Yeah, yeah. So it's um, obviously taking a little longer to get uh, out there than normally, but that's got plenty of in-depth information about our rigs. What is your favorite Camel album, and why is it Moon Madness? <laughs> it's the best question ever. Because you answered it, the, it, it, the question yourself. <laughs> but it is Moon Madness. It's the best album that they have. Mirage is okay, but Moon Madness is Mirage. I, Mirage I like, is... Moon I like Madness, Mirage more. Front to back, Moon Madness is just... It's just gold. Plus, it has the coolest album art ever. <laughs> yeah. The camel in the spacesuit, it like, doesn't get better than that. Yeah, I was going to actually just pull this out and say yeah, Mirage is my uh, favorite. <laughs> uh, I think Mirage. Just, it has that one riff. Yeah. Mood Madness does start off with the best like prefab MIDI keyboard <laughs> intro yeah. Oh, yeah. since Balsack, since my fantasy metal days. And did, we, they, did they have MIDI back then? Yeah. yeah no. I don't know. I don't know. Around since the, MIDI's been around since like the 80s. I the think. 80s, yeah. What did we, I don't Mira- know when. Mirage and Moon Madness were like early seven, mid 70s. I, I guess it was just sequen- yeah. sequence. Yeah. Or actually, probably played fucking live. <laughs> it's just, I. Yeah, it's just like it's really sound, like a, it's, <laughs> yeah. I can only describe it as the MIDI flute. I know that doesn't mean anything with that line that's yeah. like. <laughs> also but just just as on top of that camel is probably one of the ugliest bands in the world and i think that's really cute <laughs> <laughs> oh all right here's a fun one favorite beers i mean i can't Ooh. deny i like cracking open a few cold pbis every now and then you know keep it simple <laughs> well I've thoroughly been enjoying uh, this beer by Rotor. I drink it all the time. I have a case and a half of it right next to me as we speak, thanks to Durst Express. But oh, the German beer delivery service is just, I'm envious. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, Georg? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, right now I'm drinking a uh, Jäber. I don't know if that's, I think it's just in Germany, but I'm not sure. I've, seen it, in the, I've seen it in the States, it's super expensive. Yeah, it's it's a northern German beer, and it's pretty nice. Mm-hmm. I would definitely say my favorite beer. I don't have, well, I don't have a favorite beer. I have a favorite German pills, which is obviously pretty specific. That's Rothaus Pils from the Black Forest. 
<laughs> Favorite meal to get while on tour in the U.S. Maybe smart smart food. It's a good meal. Yeah, we could bring the snack crew back. <laughs> That's a snack um, crew. <laughs> I say Snyder's uh, honey mustard and onion pretzel bits. <laughs> Lo- your, loaded. Favorite, your favorite meal. <laughs> yeah, the loaded pieces. <laughs> My favorite meal is definitely David's pumpkin seeds. Oh, for sure. I, I, you see them strewn throughout the van, you know, halfway <laughs> to shore. Georg has never been to the States, and I'm so looking forward to showing him all of our food perversions. Well, there, I mean, there are fun places to get, like, when you go to, like, New Orleans or um, – yeah, M- Memphis. We had we had a really good barbecue in Memphis. We like oh, went yeah. out to, to go find some. Uh, like that's fun. That's the one cool thing about touring is that if you do have the time, you can uh, try yeah, cool. try a local cuisine, uh, like whatever area you're in. So all right, um, <laughs> guy, what what are your favorite places to visit? You uh, just maybe, 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 there are some questions also about like favorite places to play on tour. Maybe that can all be yeah, consolidated. Come, yeah. Yeah. I always, I always think it's really fun to go to Norway because uh, we have a really good we, – well, we've been having even better and better crowds there, but also it's just like a fun place to drive around because it's so fucking beautiful and all of the venues yeah. are like world-class. And, Absolutely. Uh, I, yeah, it's just kind of like a magical place. I know Georg's got a love for Norway too. Yeah. I mean, hiking mainly. Um, because the best show I've ever played was probably in Portugal uh, with 50 degree uh, and no air conditioning in the venue. Oh, oh yeah. Greece, oh, Greece, Greece, is, also, Greece is awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. fun to go to and, and, and to play. Uh, yeah. Can't wait to go back to Greece for sure. Uh, Lincoln, Lincoln, Nebraska. Love Lincoln. <laughs> Love Lincoln. <laughs> we just lost our, our two fans in Lincoln, Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> we did play a show there for like two people one time. With God a bluegrass band that opened up for us, and they were pretty good. Dude, that's – what? <laughs> yeah, it was like I this like, hard bluegrass band that opened up. We played up in a theater. I think there was like – it was like 700 cap theater, and there were probably 20 25, there. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Um, Favorite genre of metal? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass this straight to Georg. He's our resident metalhead right now. It's, of course, power metal. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> that was easy. The only metal I really listen to anymore is like, like Manila Road. Fuck yeah. Kind of like this classic heavy metal stuff. Or like, uh, you know, Dio, something like Rainbow, that kind of stuff. I'm not really that into metal, to be honest. Tough. Metal's tough to swallow these days. Yeah? Why? Yeah. Well, just like like brutal metal. I like the pretty shit. Me you too. Like, yeah, I mean, you feel like, why are you screaming so much? <laughs> right, yeah, what's wrong? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I got that when I was like, you know, younger, but now I just, I feel like, why are you doing that? Or like, if every album is the same, why are you still screaming? <laughs> <laughs> I did listen to Mortician with my mom around Christmas time. Oh, hell yeah. Yonkers, New York, brutal death metal. <laughs> my mom, she was a little concerned. <laughs> it started with S. Why is your basis so funny? <laughs> I, I don't think I can answer that. Oh, but my laugh, Risberg? Oh, Chonga. Oh, no. Was... <laughs> Chonga. Chonga. <laughs> I don't know why. You, you tell me, fans. I appreciate it, though. <laughs> what cake, do we got? Cake or pie? Pie. Dude. I feel Neither. like I used to be a pie dude, but I've recently transitioned to cake. Pie, pie yeah. guy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> too sloppy. Pies are too sweet. You too, Nick? Gil? I'm sorry. I'm just generally thinking about it. I don't know. I don't really eat cake or pie that often. I don't. Yeah, me too. But if you had the so, choice right now, what would you be happier to see? Like a chocolate cake or an apple pie? <laughs> I, I would say uh, like a chocolate mousse cake. Oh, sure. yeah. I'll take the cake in that case for sure. Wow. Right, then I'll take the pie and we're both. Hell yes. Yeah. 
Uh, okay, this was kind of a um, <laughs> aggregate question. How do you approach writing songs? What's your workflow? I don't know. I mean, for the past couple of years, we've been operating kind of long distance, and it's been a relatively recent development that at least three quarters of us live in the same city. So, I mean, we still have been writing kind of in isolation, but now coming in back to a phase where we're like actually actively sharing ideas with each other in the practice space. And, and, but yeah, I mean, pretty much just it's the past couple of albums, it's really been just recording uh, through like a computer program and building demos that way and just sending them to each other. Yeah. I, I mean the, I think that the gold and silver sessions is at least two of the songs are just a good example of of like material that we kind of created all together. Mm. Yeah. I think so. Like, Definitely, like we like, yeah. we like worked all those riffs out. I th we even made some like on the road, I think. I have something like 500 voice memos on my phone. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's true though. Like you, yeah. how many voice memos do you have? Of you being like, do, 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 boop. Da, 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 da. Like five, <laughs> close to five hundred. Hundred, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like literally five hundred. Um, all right, hey, uh, this one comes from Lowrider. Pineapple or banana on pizza? Yes, a hundred percent. Well, bananas, I don't know. Bananas. Bananas. Yeah. My question yeah. is: do, do Swedish people really put bananas on pizza? I've I've seen people putting banana on pizza i've never tried it i assume yeah. it might be okay we um, get super we just get super mushy it would but like i like sweet and savory together I mean, but I, I believe there's another question that asks us what our favorite pizza is and i hands down have to say uh linguisa pineapple is my favorite um linguisa being a, a portuguese uh <laughs> spiced meat uh, that that is like a local uh, thing for us here in the south coast of Massachusetts mm. with the pineapple. Why is Jack called Jazz? It's a great question, and even I don't even know the real answer. I believe it's because it's my online avatar, though, or like my handle has always. I been think Jack. It, I think it was you used to you used to be often misunderstood when introducing yourself to people, and a lot uh, of people would would think Jack. Jack is or a big even one. Ja jazz, which was yeah. I, that's how I remember that happening, like on tour or like yeah, Facebook. like he would introduce himself and people would say like Jack or Jack. Yeah. Like we never I, like have you ever fucking met someone named Jack or Jazz? But it used to it really did happen all the time. For sure, yeah. Or but then it, yeah, it it became my handle, and now it's kind of uh, integrated itself as as my name a little bit oh where did that go uh any guilty pleasures bands tracks or genres country music i love it to death <laughs> why, uh, do you, why do you feel guilty about that i people some people might look not look down upon me but like e even even like the normal people that around especially the people that i work with when i say that i just listen to our local uh, country radio station cat country 98.1 they're like why do you listen to the hillbilly music and, <laughs> and i don't know why because i love it what's like your favorite country artist currently going oh there's this guy named michael ray that has a song called kiss a little more think a little less that i really love right now <laughs> uh you did hey you mentioned um Something about SoundCloud earlier, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can make a plug right oh, now. Um, so I have a SoundCloud. My artist name is, is Jazz Vaughn, V-A-U-G-H-N. Like, the, like, like the, Vince Vaughn. Like the comedy actor Vince Vaughn. Um, and there's some good stuff up there. If you guys want to check it out, hit me up. We should make a country album. I'm down, Risberg, 100%. We can start it. We We've been like, collecting ideas for a while. We have a couple of good yeah. garage band sketches going on. Yeah, tell yeah. me. Let's, let's, <clears throat> let's, uh, let's shake the world and have a, <laughs> a little elder side project country. Yeah. Yeah. Georg, All what's right. your guilty pleasure? Yeah. Yeah, um, 
I don't really feel guilty about anything I listen to, but <laughs> probably Camelot would qualify as a guilty pleasure. No. I don't know. No? I don't know. They're like really good and cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, think, right. I mean, I think obviously the elephant in the room here is, uh, for me, my guilty pleasure is the band Fish. Oh, there we go. Here we go. <laughs> Fucking uh, kicked out of the band. <laughs> Um, cause they are in some ways the best band, uh, but they're also really not at the same time. <laughs> and I've no, spent they... far, t- far too much time, energy, and money seeing them. And I've definitely lost a lot of brain cells, uh, but they're awesome still. And I feel like I also don't have a guilty pleasure. I'm with Georg on this one. Everything I listen to, I don't, I'm not fucking ashamed. I'm not ashamed of fish. I like. Fish. Now you should be ashamed of fish. I don't know. I don't know. I just heard different, a little different. Than that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> are we do? Are we gonna do the pedal questions? Yeah. All right. What are your favorite guitar pedals? <laughs> there he goes. I like. Uh, I'm going to say that my favorite, well, actually, we've got a bunch of questions about like, what, are, what is your favorite fuzz pedal? What's your favorite delay pedal? What's your favorite reverb pedal? What are your three favorite pedals? All this kind of stuff. Again, we talk about this in some detail in the rig rundown that we made, but um, my favorite pedals for sure, my favorite fuzz is the Black Arts Toneworks Ferro Fuzz. My favorite delay pedal that I found so far is the Empress Ecosystem. My favorite reverb pedal that I found so far is the Maris Mercury 7. And as far as three pedals that I couldn't live without, I would say if I took those, I would have enough sound making resources to to spend a lifetime on a desert island. So, yeah. Yeah, Uh, No, I I like the I like the old the Russian original Big Muff, the tank, the, the army green pedal. Uh, if you get if you get a good one in working order, it, it is the most brutal distortion pedal in the world, and sounds unbelievably good. And they're hard they're hard to find, they're hard to repair, but they sound so killer. Favorite pedals for me, um, they change out all the time, and I'm, but I I really like one continuous pedal has been the Strymon Flint pedal, uh, which is a reverb tremolo, and it, you can get a fair amount of reverb sounds out of it, and it's just really simple, and it sounds good, and it's small. Um, other ones, uh, I don't know. The Strymon Volante or the El Capistan is a great delay for more tape tones. I use that. Um, I do want to maybe try out some more other ones, but other, uh, the other like drive pedals. Um, I have a couple creepy fingers fuzz pedals, which I really enjoy. Led Zeppelin or Pink Floyd? Easy answer. I assume everybody has the same answer. I'm hoping you're all saying Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. No. I was... Georg? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, if you had asked me that question 15 years ago, I would have said Zeppelin. I think that that's probably the same for everybody. Probably, but yeah, probably right now I'm not so sure anymore. But I mean, should we have a Zeppelin renaissance and just like, get back into Zeppelin? I love Led Zeppelin. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, sure. Led Zeppelin is cool too. I feel like I kind of had pushed them to the side a little bit in the past years, and maybe I should, you know, let them back in. Yeah, and invite yeah. them over. You were progressing by complexifying your music in the past, and now with Embers, at least that's the only song available from the new record. You're progressing by simplifying, and the question was, I think, why this, why this progression, or how. Um, I find that a very interesting question, and I think I that I I really like that one because it made me think about like is this actually is this true? Do we feel this way about it too? I think a lot of it relates to the production because like the production on the new record is so very different and so spacious and like very. Um, it's not that it's like simple or there's. I mean, when we were recording Embers we put a fuck ton of layers and a lot of work into that song and there's a lot going on there. And uh, I think the last thing I would say is that we've simplified things, especially with that track. It's like, 
there's less leads maybe, but there's right. like very complex yeah. rhythmic <laughs> picking patterns going over each other. There's all sorts yeah. of stuff going that, that's yeah. kind of like, to me, it, that was a, that's a very hard song to play. Uh, right. Is the structure simpler than other songs? I don't necessarily I don't think, so. think so. Maybe it's a little more, um, there's like a more defined chorus of the song or, or something, but uh, I, maybe it's one of those things. I don't know. Are we too distant from like the music ourselves? Like we are, we are not this, are we too like close to it to like know this shit? I don't know. Right. Maybe that song doesn't feel simple. Right. I agree. Um, uh, here's another good one. How much, if any thought do you give to whether fans will accept your growth on each album or not? Oh, it's a really good one. Cause it's pretty polarizing the, the fan base as far as like what subtitled in DRS versus lore and beyond. I don't know. I feel like every record we put out, there's like a fair number of people who just say, Oh, I'm like, I'm upset because this doesn't sound like the earlier thing that I like. And then there's like a bunch of people who are just like open for it. I think we don't really, I honestly don't think we give that much thought to it because we take for granted maybe that we have a pretty cool fan base that up until now has really, for the most part, been very open-minded and like been pretty happy to, to embrace us like with whatever we're doing. And I think that's what most of our fans hopefully like about the band is that we just are trying to push the envelope and do something different with every record. Nowadays you put out something and immediately you've got like everyone commenting and telling you straight up like what they think about it. It's fucking like, it's hard to not let that get into your psyche somehow. Absolutely. You just got to try and keep it up. Have you ever gotten stoned, eaten pizza and played SNES game as a band? I'm going to go with yes. We totally, cause we had the SNES and the Vario. Eating pizza, point, I don't know. I mean, Stone playing video games for let's sure. Let's just let's just say that there's a very good possibility that this trifecta could have happened altogether. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I could have been stoned eating a pizza playing SNES with you guys in the var in our tour van. Absolutely. It, 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 I think it's happened before. So yes. Do you make and record music that is rejected in the end and deemed not good enough? I get the impression that bands often make tons of music, but that most of it doesn't make the cut, so to speak. Uh, it's about finding gems in between. I would say right off the bat, that's a hundred percent applicable and true for us. Probably most of the music that we write does not make the cut. Tons yeah. of riff ideas saved on my hard drive that every now and then I'll, I'll it will like pop up and I'll be like, what is this track? And I'm like, Oh, it's like an idea Nick sent to me like five years ago. <laughs> it's just like by the wayside, like just gone now. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, probably a hundred logic tracks. I've just read, you know, one to 10 minute songs. That means one to 10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've, a lot of my songs are insanely repetitious too, so it'd be like one riff for like five minutes. So. Okay. Jack, did you enjoy the Romanian Polinka? Oh boy, did I ever! It's it's like uh, drinking nail polish remover. That, <laughs> well, usually, okay. So you you when you go to into Eastern Europe, I feel like every city you go to, there's one fan that gives you something like this. <laughs> looks just like a water bottle, except I have a little skull, skull and crossbones on it. And it's like, it's not water. They're like, it's not water. So don't like put it next to the other water bottles. And you're like, okay. And then you drink it and it just like burns all the way through your entire body. It gets you good and buzzed up. Specifically, I remember being in Romania and one guy just like would not leave us alone until we tried his palinka. And we finally tried it, and I think it gave me like instant nausea. Oh yeah, definitely. I think that was that was in Cluj, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'll try your fucking palinka. Give me a uh, so yeah, it's delicious. <laughs> Georg, how do you feel about the term post stoner? I have no problem with it existing. Uh, yeah. I'm definitely not post stoner. 
Aren't you? You just smoked, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely current stuff. Yeah. Um, What's your favorite Yes album? I'm going to go ahead and say Close to the Edge. Yeah, that's my probably my favorite too. Yeah, yeah sure. Why not? Oh, okay. I that's was, yours too? Was like, all right. Close to the Edge is mine. Yeah, uh, but like the first record, yeah, yes. Like the speech bubble, like that. I, I always like bands' first records for some reason. And like, I love that record. It's a little more like classic rock and roll, and they do it well. I like Tales Actually, from Papa maybe, Oceans. <laughs> yeah. I would, say, I would say maybe the Yes album is my favorite album. So maybe I think, because that has like, it's kind of what you're saying most, has like really good classic rock tunes. And it's yeah, yeah, super cool. For sure. It just what's, your fa- what's your favorite Sabbath record? The other side of the rock spectrum here. Oh boy. I'm going to say volume four. And then they have this like live compilation compilation called past lives, which is fucking silly. I might go Dio on this one and say heaven and hell. Heaven and hell's badass. That record is so cool. That was like but the, the, the Sabbath record I listened to most in my teenage years for sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I just love that one. Also like I've over listened to Sabbath so much. It's just nice to hear like a different take on them. I like, I think I like them all somehow. Maybe Paranoid because it was the first that I listened to, but in general, everything. There are so many good questions in here. Your least favorite band. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's some good shit talking potential here. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right, so what is your best and worst experience on stage? I'll, I'll, I'll kick this off. I think that um, my best, even though this is cliche and kind of dumb, but my favorite experience on stage was at uh, this festival called Kockenbach. That night, we also had to leave directly after the show we played, which sucks. Like, that's a shitty playing experience. But that show, I uh, some somebody from the crowd threw a bra at me, <laughs> and it like it like hit my head sock of my bass, and I was like, "Whoa, this is really cool." And then out I of all the shows you played, that was the <laughs> most meaningful experience. <laughs> hey, hey, has it happened to you? <laughs> how do you know? That, how do you know they weren't trying to throw the bra at me? It hit it was, my head. It hit my it head was, sock, dude. It was definitely that high winds you were talking about. It was definitely yeah. going to. Oh, well, it, it sailed. It, just went, it, was going to, it was just going to Sweet Rizzy and just turned yeah. it was. You know what it was? It was the fucking fog machine blew it over to you. Yeah, Not the fog cool. machine blew it <laughs> Oh, but that's like your worst playing experience, right? One of the worst, weirdest experiences was our uh, – this is not uh, shitting on Chris at all, but it was Chris's first show with us in – Chris is our sound, sound guy. Our sound engineer, yeah, Chris. Uh, very dearest homie. But it was his first show, and it was kind of a clusterfuck. And um, somehow my keyboards didn't get plugged in for uh, for the set, oh. and it was it was blind. Was like the first song or the <laughs> second song, and there's that keyboard break. It just breaks to a keyboard. The organ, yeah. And there was it was a soul. You know, there was a lot of people there. We had friends and stuff. That just there was just like no keyboards. <laughs> so, so it was just like. <laughs> Uh, you're reminding me of a of a funny time. Um, I I guess it was before you joined the band, Mike, that we were playing Spirited Aphelion, and I was using a looping pedal to do a certain part. And I'm I'm using this Boss um, looper pedal that's got like a built-in metronome, which I've never used before. Uh, but it also has a click track if you want it. And like accidentally, like the knob for the volume and the click track got like nudged up and it's not just like a in, inconspicuous t- 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 it's a fucking like <laughs> it's a fucking drum machine kick drum and a and a hi-hat <laughs> doing it at the same time and so like it's this break where it's just like me playing guitar and then i loop it just by myself and we were doing it pretty good on that tour up till this point we're in hamburg and uh, and then, of course, like somehow the volume was turned up on the metronome, and it did, and it did, and I kicked the looper pedal, and it's like, <laughs> 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 and everyone's like, 
what the fuck is that? <laughs> and uh, then I just like had to turn it off real quick. I mean, everyone, I guess, I feel like even the audience laughed. I don't know. It was just a like technical, <laughs> technical ha ha. It was funny. For sure. I mean, on the, on our live at Roadburn LP, which is our first time playing Roadburn, it's probably our fir- like the first our like, only big- time playing Roadburn. Our only time playing, Road- but it was like the first like big show that we played, like big festival show, and uh, we played a pretty good set. But during Riddle of Steel, my I-, I only had one pedal, and it was plugged in with a one spot that was connected to a US to EU adapter, <laughs> and it was in one of those power strips that has like a little door. That you like op- open the, the door to plug something in, and it, so it's on a spring, and like halfway through um, Riddle of Steel, the door like one, <laughs> like it like kicked out my uh, adapter the, out of the, the uh, door one. Yeah, the door won that <laughs> battle, and <laughs> and it threw my adapter off the power strip, and I, I had no signal, and you can hear it on the record. <laughs> it's like it's pretty embarrassing to me, but. Uh, that's the worst, I think. My guitar is out of tune for like half of that record too, so it's all good. <laughs> it was also the time at fucking Psycho Las Vegas when we were playing the pool stage and all these like gigantic yoga ball kind of, I think oh, yeah. they were supposed to be beach balls, but they were really heavy and they kept getting thrown at us. And that I was like, <laughs> They were like hitting our pedal boards and I tried to boot one out of the way and I just like kicked it straight into this this girl's face who was in the front row and she was just like screaming at me and like i didn't it wasn't intentional but she was super pissed off and i was like trying to like play and apologize and kick beach balls out of the way at the same time that was very frustrating sorry to sorry to that chick actually Whoever you are. Whoever. I'll say maybe one of my most be- – maybe not my best performance by any means or the best show, but uh, his first tour in Norway in – ah, shit, where was it? Tromso at the – what the fuck was the festival? Bukta. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but that okay. was just like – that was my first tour, one of, the, one of my first shows. And, but it was just – it was at the, the stage at the bottom of a like glacial fjord. It was just – it was also it's also twelve hours north of the Arctic Circle, right? Oh, it's beautiful. So it was twenty four hours of sunlight and just it like most epic landscape, and you're just playing inside of it. It was definitely one of the most memorable. Experience. You're playing in an amazing surrounding to a bunch of people who do not give a fuck about it <laughs> whatsoever. Right. Well, I, I actually remember playing Lore and like there's the the Jamie Spacey part in that, and I was just like, that was, I don't know. Right. I was just was thinking a, about that getting a, that good time. That fresh whale fillet for dinner. Oh uh, <laughs> eating, eating whale with con- the band converged. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh yeah, so the I mean the best and worst at the same time was probably a drunk and naked guy falling into my drum set. Well knocking over all the symbols. <laughs> pretty shitty but at the same time that's the stuff that i like to happen live and then the best part came when you accidentally hit his nut sack when you were going in for a fucking snare hit <laughs> might have happened <laughs> quick i don't know rim. anymore you did a rim shot on his nuts <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite hip-hop artist Ooh. biggie dude straight up gang star Gangstar, Nick says original Gangstar. original Boston relocated to New York, but definitely Gangstar. Okay. Gangstar was a Boston originally. I mean, they re- really? I think they relocated to New York like pretty quickly. But I'm in the I'm I'm currently in the push a T camp. Uh, no, right now I listen to a couple of Outcast records. Recently. Oh, that's hell yeah. But in general, The Roots and Abbath do, maybe? Abbath? Abbath? A- MF Doom. Abbath oh, sorry. Doom. Somebody I heard. <laughs> or I heard Abbath. Oh, you I weren't guess, saying black metal? No, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if we were to say mo- most uh, like recently inspired hip-hop artist or sustained one, Biggie is definitely like my like all, you know, classic Go one. To. But de- definitely Viper. Come on. 
Oh, it's true. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, gotta yeah, go with Viper. Yeah, yeah. Fucking Viper. You're right. Yeah. I mean, Jack, what's your what's your favorite <laughs> fantasy novel, or what's your favorite novel's fantasy? My favorite novel's fantasy. I'm gonna have to go with the uh, his dark material. Uh, his dark materials. The it's like the Golden Compass. Uh, and uh, if if there are any Golden Compass fans out there, you totally understand. And you probably say that the show wasn't that good. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, tell me about your favorite pair of shoes. Favorite pair of shoes. I'm going to, I think everybody has their, what's like, or should we say, what's our favorite tour shoes? Cause I will go with the Red Wings, Iron Rangers. Tour shoes would be like my Doc Martens probably the last two tours I did with them. Yeah. And then I think all time favorite shoe would be the, uh, classic fit or not classic but bands authentic for sure I'm wearing those forever so except they kind of they're kind of shitty so but Georg? Uh, usually i'm too poor to afford more than one pair of shoes so i'll use whatever skate shoes i can find for playing drums which work i mean just have to has to have a, a straight sole or something so i can play with it that's it <laughs> Too poor to afford more than one. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, I only play in my boots made of solid gold. Well, everybody, that was a lot of fun. I hope that the answers that we gave you to your questions uh, satisfied your need to to hang out with us, the elder, in the, in these COVID nineteen uh, times. Can I we, think I can we? do that better. I think I can do that better. <laughs> well, all right, folks. That was super fun. I, I think that we all had a great time answering these questions for you guys. And I hope that it gave you a little bit of insight into us uh, as a band and as friends just hanging out. So, um, Omens is released on April 24th. We're very excited for the new record to come out. And uh, I think I'll just leave it with saying heavy metal, rock and roll, baby.